Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Hyperion Hub, your meeting place for all things Disney. Now your hosts. Hello everybody and welcome to the Hyperion Hub, your meeting place for all things Disney. We are in the hub in the Magic Kingdom. I'm John Alois. Sean and John have the week off, but I have some guest hosts with me. Joining me on the Hyperion Hub this week, we have Jolie. Hello. Evan. Hello. And making her debut on the Hyperion Hub, we have Tara. Hi. Before we get started, I want to remind you we are on all social media, including Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter, we are at Hub Hyperion. If you'd like to email us, you can send us a note at podcast at thehyperionhub.com. We'd also encourage you to send a voice recorded message there. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, please rate and review us so more people can find the show. All right, we like to start every show off with our Disney views. And this week, we're talking Magic Kingdom and we're talking favorite lands. What is your favorite land and why? We're going to start off with Jolie. Um, I would have to go with Fantasyland just because, and it's actually a really hard choice, but I would say Fantasyland just from a nostalgia perspective. Um, that Peter Pan's flight is kind of the first ride you think of as a kid when you come. It's a lot of people's first ride. It was uh, our kids, one of their very first rides, and you remember their reactions. Um, it's kind of where all the magic begins. So That's great. Evan? Uh, for me, it has always, without a doubt, been Adventureland because of the overall mix of great uh, rides and restaurants and uh, entertainment. I mean, they have the Dole Whip there, my favorite snack. Um, I love every attraction there is a 10 for me, except for um, Aladdin. And Oh, we just had a proposal right next to where Jolie and I got engaged. That is awesome. Right in front of the castle. Go ahead. And we have a marching band walking through. This is incredible. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically it. That's why Adventureland's my favorite. Tara, how about you? Um, uh, sorry, I'm a little thrown off. That's all right. This is great. Um, so my favorite land is probably Frontierland because it has one of my favorite rides, Big Thunder Mountain. And um, I also love Splash Mountain and the thrill of it. <laughs> well, you guys didn't leave me much, so I'm going to go with Liberty Square. I love the history aspect to it. I love the Hall of Presidents, but of course one of my favorite attractions is the Haunted Mansion. So there's so much going on here right now. This is incredible. What a way to kick off our show, our special show from Walt Disney World. We'll talk to you in a bit. Can I just get your names really quick? Yeah, I'm Nicole. Nice to meet you. I'm Dejon Perry. Dejon Perry. Oh, I'm Nicole Figueroa. Okay, <laughs> congratulations. You guys are from Chicago. You just got engaged. How long were you planning this? Um, I've, I got the ring in December. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah but uh, oh my god. Yeah, but we planned the trip about two months ago, probably. Awesome. Wow. You guys know each other. So we met when I was a freshman in high school. I was a junior. So I was 14, he was 16. And I'm 24. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we like we liked each other, sure. but because I was so young, we just yeah. stayed friends. And then we went. She, she's my cousin. She was a cheerleader at his college. I went to one of her games, and then I saw him, and then it just like happened. And this place is special for you guys. Yeah. Well, or, yeah. I, I haven't been since I was like four years old. Okay. And last I time I, so yeah, me. last time I came was three years ago. But I love Disney. Yeah. I love yeah. Disney. That's so awesome, guys. Congratulations so much. All right, we thought we'd do a little dining review for you. We're eating dinner in the Magic Kingdom at Liberty Tree Tavern. Our The person who seated us, Marcel, a manager on duty, told us about how each room is dedicated to a historical figure. We're eating in the Paul Revere room. He also told us that Paul Revere was a silversmith. There are silver dishes and cups on shelves in this room. 
He also was a political cartoonist, which we didn't know, and there's some cartoons on the wall as well. This is a family-style restaurant, so they serve you everything on the fixed menu. We were served salad uh, with honey shallot vinaigrette and bread. I thought the bread was fine. The salad was outstanding. Very good. The menu, it's all you care to enjoy, all you can eat. The salad uh, was just, you know, tossed mixed greens with house-made dressing. The dressing, of course, like I said, was the honey shallot vinaigrette. So the platter, the Patriot's platter is what we were served. Roasted turkey breast, pot roast, and oven-roasted pork with mashed potatoes, seasonal vegetables, which are green beans, and herb stuffing, and house-made macaroni and cheese. So far, I'm enjoying it. The pork actually is a standout for me because I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. The turkey is great. You know, it's just like a standard Thanksgiving feast. Uh, the stuffing is very good. The pot roast has a little bit of a sweetness to it. It's delicious. The mashed potatoes are great. So we'll go around the table in a minute. Everybody's still eating, but we're enjoying it. So adults are going to pay $39. Children uh, ages 3 to 9 are $21. But we're all adults, according to Disney, at the table here. So it's good. It's very good. And then we have we have an amazing uh, dessert coming out. Ooey gooey toffee cake, vanilla toffee cake, chocolate sauce, and vanilla ice cream. That's still to come. As you can tell, it's a little noisy, but we're in the Magic Kingdom, so it's to be expected. But it's a beautiful old restaurant, original to the Magic Kingdom in 1971. Restrooms are upstairs. So that may or may not be an issue for some people. As you would expect, Disney spared no expense on details. The room that we're in it has a beautiful fireplace with some with a gun rack above it. And it's a stone wall and beautiful hardwood floors. And mostly everything is in wood and uh, you know the lights are made to look like candles. So well done. We'll talk in a minute to everybody else. Before we go around the table, just to follow up, there is a restroom downstairs, uh, but it's a single bathroom. The food was great. We just had the dessert. It was amazing. The toffee was perfectly sticky. It, it was ice cream on a cookie, a chocolate chip soft cookie, and... For some reason, Jolie, my wife, didn't do this for the last 15 years or so, but today <laughs> she evenly divided up the uh, dessert, so she got some this time as well. All right, Evan, let's start with you. What did you like? Uh, well, first of all, the green beans I found really well, or really good. They were really good. Uh, I ate a lot of those. Um, as well as the, what was it, pot roast? The pot roast was amazing. Um, it was tender and cut and uh, cooked perfectly. With all those different meats, things could tend to <laughs> blend together, but that stuck out for me and for Evan. That was my favorite part of the meal, for me at least. Um, the dessert was really good, like a warm cookie with vanilla ice cream on it, which I liked. Yeah, always good. Jara? I really liked the mashed potatoes and the green beans. And the mashed potatoes were really good. They were perfectly salted. And the green beans were really good, which is like the first time I've ever said that. 
And um, I really liked the toffee um, uh, cookie with the ice cream. It was really warm and nicely prepared. And Jolie, how about you? Uh, for me, a couple things stick out to me. The pot roast and mashed potatoes were absolutely amazing, in my opinion. They stood out far and above everything else, and everything else was really, really good. So, um, I'm not always a huge fan of family-style meals because I feel like there's a lot of waste. But in this instance, I felt like there was like a really good uh, portion size, and we ate well. We're leaving very, very full, which is what you want to do when you're paying, you know, a lot for a meal. Um, but we, there wasn't a lot of waste left over, so I felt good about that. Um, and, you know, I know the drinks, uh, alcoholic drinks at uh, Magic Kingdom are a bit controversial, but uh, it was really nice to be able to have um, a Sam Adams lager when you're in this setting. You know, it felt very authentic, and it added to the meal, in my opinion. Yeah, so again, we all liked it. It's very expensive, but I felt like we certainly got our money's worth as far as portions go because we could have gotten more even though we left some. Um, but uh, everything was great. My favorite thing was probably the pot roast, and uh, I loved, uh, of course, the dessert. So. Well, and the other thing is when you have people with different, um, you know, different tastes, yeah. Uh, some kids are more picky than others. Not having to sit down and choose, just them bringing everything out, and there was something for everybody. There was something that everybody loved, and everybody ate a green vegetable, and everybody's leaving with a protein in their belly and really full and ready to go do some more, you know, park stuff. So I think it was a win, big time. Excellent. Hello from Animal Kingdom. Thought we'd just get a little bit of the atmosphere as we're heading from Expedition Everest over to Sultuli Canteen Pandora. in Pandora, the world of Avatar. So here's a little bit of the music. Africa and Pandora straight ahead. So far we've had a great trip. We'll talk all about it. We'll talk all about it next week. On that podcast. Pandora to the left. We'll be passing the Nomad Lounge, which we love. We got up early this morning, headed straight to Flight of Passage, and then Only Dinosaur. About an hour. Yeah, we waited about an hour and we got here right at Rope Drop. So we weren't here early enough, <laughs> but it was great. We loved that attraction. And uh, my wife and daughter headed back after we went to Dinosaur. My son and I stayed and went on Expedition Everest. Now going to grab some lunch and head back to the hotel. So here's Tiffin's on our right and the Nomad Lounge immediately follows it. <laughs> that shirt said park hopping is my cardio. <laughs> All right, as we cross the bridge here and head into Pandora, we'll talk to you later. All right, I thought we'd give you a mini review of our lunch at Satuli Canteen and 
everything was great. First of all, I ordered the cheeseburger steamed pods uh, on bao buns. And uh, everything I've read, everything I've heard, I agree with. They do taste like McDonald's cheeseburgers to an extent, uh, but very tasty um, and obviously filling. You get two of those, plus coleslaw and chips. The coleslaw was fine, had a little bit of a tanginess to it. The chips had some some uh, spice to them, uh, very good. I didn't finish every single bite of everything. I did eat both of the bows, the bow buns. Those were great, but uh, but everything was excellent. And my son got the chili spice crispy fried tofu. Yeah, so um, I got the vegetarian option, which I haven't done this entire trip so far. Um, and it was very good, honestly. I was I was happy with what I picked, and. It tasted like Spanish rice. Yeah, overall, overall, the best part for me was my base that I chose, the rice and beans. The rice and beans was were so good, so good. Um, but it also came with tofu and coleslaw and a sauce of my choice. Um, I didn't eat most of the tofu, but to be fair, this is my first time ever having it, and I didn't necessarily enjoy it. That's just my taste. Okay. Um, it was spicy, which I liked. Uh, it just, I don't like tofu, apparently. But uh, everything else in the meal I ate, like, my plate's pretty much empty. The one thing I will say was kind of weird was uh, they had boba balls in it, which, like, um, very fruity. Flavorful. Yeah, they, they kind of explode in your mouth. I so they were a bit, that. they were a bit uh, strange to be eating something pretty spicy and uh, not very uh, fruity, and then to Im- immediately have an explosion of like blue raspberry in my mouth or strawberry or whatever it is. So that was a bit odd, but it honestly, I didn't mind it. It wasn't bad. Overall, pretty good, pretty good meal. Yeah, the boba balls kind of extend the theming. They're unique. You're on Pandora. The restaurant's beautiful uh, for what it is. I mean, it's, you know, it, uh, it also extends the theming. This is supposed to be an old hangar or something that the the plants have grown into. The, the story for Pandora, the world of Avatar, is this is years after we left... Yeah, years after the movie, and now we're visiting. And we left all of our gear here and some of our facilities, and the plants have found their way into the facilities. So, excellent lunch uh, overall. And uh, just to give you an idea on the price, uh, along with our lunch, those were twelve forty nine each. Uh, my son, who's fifteen, his was twelve forty nine. Mine was twelve twenty nine. And uh, we also had two waters. So total was 38.12, about what you expect to pay on vacation at lunchtime. We'll talk to you in a bit. This is John and Evan from Satuli Canteen. All right, well, we just had a great meal in the House of Blues at Disney Springs, and I am so excited to bring on the show two of my closest friends. I just got to eat with them and their families. Every time we're down here, we try to meet up with the Paviches, Joey and Jason and their families. They are in real estate in Fort Myers, part of Realty World Florida, and we thought we'd talk to them and and find out what Disney Disney means to them and to the state of Florida, Joey Pavich and Jason Pavich. And let's start with Joe. What does Disney mean to the state of Florida? 
John, it's such a great area. It's a destination. I mean, people come and travel from all over the world to be here. And uh, our area is only about three and a half hours away from Disney World. I feel like a lot of people that come down here, you know, when they travel down here with their families, they're going to go to Disney World. And uh, just us being so close to it and pretty much close to everything in, in, in the state of Florida, it's, it's a great destination. It, does, it brings people here, that's for sure. And Jason, what do you think? John, so each part of, of, of Florida basically offers something different. Orlando has a, a life to it that we're not really used to down south by us. You know, Orlando, Florida, there's so much, so many theme parks in the area, but Disney. Disney World, either you have to go to the west coast of the uh, of, of the country or you're coming out by us on this side. And the fact that we're only a few hours away from Disney World, we really feel uh, that, it's, that it's a special place uh, to, to be. Guys, you know I'm a big Disney fan. I've known you my whole life. What does it mean for you? What does Disney mean and Walt Disney World mean for you guys? John, it just brings me back to when I was a kid going there with my parents and thinking about my grandparents that were there with their kids. And uh, some of the most special moments for me is it's a small world. Being on there with my kids, knowing that my grandpa was there with my mom and you know my dad were there as kids. And, and certainly it's just such a great feeling knowing that when I ride that ride, it's just it's history. I feel like, I just feel like watching my kids grow up that at some point my kids will have their kids go there and and their kids will go there and and my grandparents were there. So it's just such a great feeling and I feel like that, being on that ride just brings me right back to when I was a kid. John, Joe couldn't have said it any better. Um, you know, there's really, there's no place, you know, like this in the world. They, they call it the happiest place, you know, on, on earth for a reason. If that's what they call it, it's, it really is the happiest place you could possibly bring your family to. The fact that we, we came here as kids with our, our, our parents and grandparents, we're able to bring our kids and hopefully our grandchildren, grandchildren here one day. There really is nothing like it, and we feel um, just honored to, to live so close to it. Well, I'm honored. Thank you guys for being on my podcast, Thanks, Joey John. and Jason. This is I, so awesome. I can't believe we're here doing this, John. This is awesome. And your podcast is incredible, by the way. We Thank love you. listening to it. Thank you, guys. John, there's no other person we'd rather be here at Disney World with but you. You treasure it the most, and it makes each vacation just that much better every time we see you here. John, when we walk in Disney World, we don't grab maps anymore when we're with, with you because <laughs> you know this park better than anybody, that's for sure. Thanks, guys. Hello, everyone. I am at Disney's Hollywood Studios in an attraction I think every true Walt Disney fan needs to check out at least once. I'm going to walk you through it. It's called One Man's Dream and it's all about Walt Disney's career and his life essentially. You start off in a room called Walt Disney Presents. It has various photos from his film career and theme park career and then you head towards Chicago and Marceline and there's actually a desk that Walt himself used and he carved his initials WD in it. There are models along the way, models of the original Main Street USA in Disneyland. There are posters on the wall from early in his career with Oswald the Lucky Rabbit and Alice in Cartoon Land. As we head towards the 1930s, there are toys from the 30s in here. Uh, Mickey and Minnie dolls. There's a small telephone and a clock. It's from early Mickey Mouse merchandise. One of Walt's first desks is behind glass on the left. And this is Walt talking about the multiplane camera that was developed in 1937. As you walk through, there are lots of things you can read um, dedicated to the art of animation, Mickey's milestones. 
all the early films in the 40s and as we head towards the 1950s there's a model of Sleeping Beauty Castle and above it is playing the open for the Disneyland TV show Tall tales and true from the legendary past Tomorrowland. Original concept artwork from Disneyland. There's a model uh, that's on my left here, and it's the original Jungle Cruise in Adventureland. We're into the 1960s. It's not all completely linear. There's a small area over here dedicated to California Adventure and a model of it. To the right are more films, live action films, Treasure Island, Mary Poppins. Straight ahead is Cinderella Castle model. And there are international park posters. Progress City to Pandora, a section dedicated to the 1964 World's Fair with It's a Small World. We head towards an Epcot Spaceship Earth model and then a huge model of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and the Millennium Falcon. On my right is artwork from Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and it ends with the Halcyon, Star Cruiser, Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. There's a small Pirates of the Caribbean exhibit in here. And it takes us right to the Walt Disney Theater, where we will watch a 16-minute film about Walt Disney and his life. It's narrated by Julie Andrews. So, once again, for every Disney fan, make sure you check out One Man's Dream in Disney's Hollywood Studios. All right, we're back in the hub to close out our show. We're in the Magic Kingdom, and I thought we could go around and talk about some of our highlights. What were some of the things that you loved? Something new maybe that you did? We stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge, Kadani Village, which was amazing. Getting up in the morning and seeing animals, going to sleep, seeing animals. And uh, it's just a really cool hotel. Very peaceful. Love the music. Let's start with Tara. What were some of your highlights? Um, some of my highlights were obviously building a lightsaber because that was just awesome. Yes, she got to build a lightsaber with Evan at Savi's workshop. workshop. And uh, what a cool experience. I got to be in there with them. Great show. We got to hear the legacy of the lightsaber. And it was really awesome. What yeah. color was yours? Uh, yours? Mine was, mine is blue. And I just really like it because uh, it's personalized to you. And you can keep it forever and just remember the experience yeah, and great. yeah and another highlight is probably riding rock and roller coaster like four or five times with your eyes open this time <laughs> yeah with my eyes open <laughs> yeah it was great A classic I, for sure yeah and my picture on splash mountain was gorgeous <laughs> screaming your head off <laughs> evan how about you so I got three um, from this trip, three great new memories. Obviously, one of them would be the lightsaber. Um, man, that was just such a cool experience. What color is yours? I chose red. Um, and just being able, like like Tara said, it's personalized to you. I also bought a uh, bonus white kyber crystal, so I can have a red and white kyber uh, lightsaber. Um, my second thing... Um, I scored the highest possible score yes. in Buzz Lightyear uh, Space Ranger Spin, which was 999,999. 999. 
one away from a million, but I'm sure I'll get there soon. Yeah, I haven't figured out uh, where the little secret spots are. Um, and what's your third thing? And then my third thing isn't um, a... Well, it is new, but it's more of a uh, cool thing that I did. Um, so we went to Hollywood Studios twice and managed to get every ride-in that we wanted on the first day. So the second day, I downloaded the Play Disney app and walked around with the um, Star Wars data pad and just... Uh, I, I explored the entirety of Galaxy's Edge. I basically have the place memorized at this point. I explored um, everything around there, hacking into the Millennium Falcon and uh, scanning crates all over the place, and it was just a great time. Julia, how about you? Um, my highlight was definitely as an animal lover, having the Savannah view at Kadani Village. Uh, just all the animals that we got to see were just precious and so fun. We, we got to see an Okapi, I think I'm saying that right, I'm not sure, but uh, just galloping and, and frolicking in a thunderstorm the other day. It was just really cool, cool stuff. Mine would be seeing the Millennium Falcon once again. You know, it was like I was eight years old again when my parents gave me my Millennium Falcon toy and I just love seeing it in person. Being in Galaxy's Edge and hearing the music and interacting with some of the things you can do there, uh, understanding some of the storylines that go with Galaxy's Edge was great. And of course, Animal Kingdom Lodge. And we're looking at the castle in the hub and we had such a great trip. Thank you everybody for listening. Remember, we are on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. We're at Hub Hyperion. Please email us at podcast at the Hyperion Hub.com. We'll have another report next week. Thanks everybody and have a great week from the Hub. This is John Alois and family closing out the Hyperion Hub, your meeting place for all things Disney. We're glad you could join us. We'd love to hear from you. You can email or send us a recorded audio message at podcast at the Hyperion Hub.com. Find us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The Hyperion Hub is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or its subsidiaries. We'll meet you next time at the Hyperion Hub.